Welcome to the news on Zodiac. I am Chansim Lozabanda. The headlines. Salima Sugar Company under fire for bringing expatriates from India to operate manufacturing plant at a time Malawi grapples with high rate of unemployment. Park orders Malawi police to conduct fresh investigations into 6 million kwacha funds meant for PPEs in gender ministry. Malawi Prison Services pushes blame to Dodma for not following procurement procedures in COVID-19 response. In sports, TNM Super League teams to boost their squads as transfer window expects to reopen from 15th to 3rd of May. Now the news in detail. Salima Sugar Company has come under fire for bringing into the country expatriates from India to operate a sugar manufacturing plant in Salima district despite the persistent challenge of lack of employment among the youths in the country. Social commentator Longezo Maschini says this is an indication that there are loopholes in enforcing the law on procedures that are followed to have expatriates working in the country. However, Secretary for the company, Dr. Charles Tupi, says expatriates currently working there are specialized in sugar production, which is not offered by any learning institution in the country. Winston Kaimira reports. A total of 40 Indian nationals have come into the country to work as specialists at Salima Sugar, sugar Company in Salima money. District. Initially, the company says it wanted to bring into the country 78 expatriates, but government reduced the number to 40 to ensure some Malawians access the employment opportunity. Social commentator Alonjezo Maschini warns that if not checked, this will continue having negative effects on the country's labor force in which thousands of Malawians are not employed. These are things which are not supposed to happen elsewhere. We need to know that in, in every country, they only rely on the labor force from other countries. They import the labor force from other countries only when they know that those expertise they are not in that country. But the Secretary for Salima Sugar Company, Dr. Charles Tupi, has defended the company, saying expatriates that are brought into the country are specialists in sugar production who are not available at the national level. Salima Sugar, as of now, what it is doing, it is trying to transfer the skill to Malawians. As of now, within the factory, we employ 280 people within the factory. And the, uh, these 280 people are Malawian. Only 40 are the ones that are now in the country. It is, however, not clear as to which ministry provided clearance for the 40 Indian nationals as officials from ministries of labor, industry, trade, as well as homeland security were unable to provide information when contacted. This is Winston Kamira reporting for Zodiac. The Public Accounts Committee of Parliament has ordered Malawi police to conduct fresh investigations into close to 6 million kwacha funds that went to the Social Protection Committee under Ministry of Gender. The funds were earmarked for the procurement of COVID-19 personal protective equipment, PPE. Committee chairperson Shadrick Namalomba suspects acts of forgery on documents that were used by suppliers of the PPEs. Chimwe Badata reports. Members of the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament took turns quizzing Minister of Gender officials on usage of COVID-19 funds, which the 6.2 billion guaja report showed part of 6 million guaja that went to the Social Protection Committee under the ministry was abused. Minister of Gender got an additional 6 million guaja for the procurement of personal protective equipment. Park suspects acts of forgery in the tender documents that were used to procure the PPEs. The 6.2 billion Kwaja report indicates that bloated figures were used to procure face masks, among other items. Committee Chairperson Shadrick Namalomba feels this was an anomaly and has since directed Malawi Police Service to conduct fresh investigations. The money will have to be refunded and the individuals that he were involved in this must be disciplined, even to the extent of facing criminal investigation. They must be investigated. We must recover this money. We cannot allow this to happen. Principal Secretary responsible for administration in the Ministry of Gender, Community Development and Social Welfare, Isaac Karopola, told us the investigation will determine the truth over the usage of the funds in question. We do welcome uh, that investigation uh, for the police to go and determine indeed the, on, the, on the prices. 
Pag has given seven days to Minister of Gender officials to furnish the committee with supporting documents on the supply of procured PPEs as findings review procurement processes were botched. For Zodiac, this is Chimwemwe Padata. Earlier, the committee accused Prison Service Department of botching procurement procedures in the procurement of resources under COVID-19 response. Committee chairperson Shadrick Namalomba made the accusation this morning when officials from the department appeared before PAC. Prison Service Controlling Officer Clement Kainja blames the anomaly on Department of Disaster and Management Affairs for not providing guidelines when dispersing the funds. We have this report. The Public Accounts Committee of Parliament today grilled officials from the prison department. It was a lengthy session into the usage of COVID-19 funds precisely in the procurement of PPEs is what took center stage. In part, through its chairperson, Shadrick Namalomba, accused the prison department of not following proper procedures in procuring COVID-19 essentials that were to be used under the department including PPEs and others. The department is precisely being condemned for using a request for quotation RFQ, unlike open tendering when procuring the PPEs. On this, it was said through uh, Park Chairperson Shadrick Namalomba that open tendering was botched in the procurement process, and this affected the whole process of procuring 135 million kwacha that was allocated to procure the PPEs in the department. But Prison Department Procuring Officer Clement Kainja accused Dodma for not providing guidelines in the usage of COVID-19 funds that were allocated to the department. And Kainja recommended that Dodma should in future clarify on how funds allocated in response to disasters should be used to avoid abuse. And Park has also asked the prison department to provide a clearance consent in form of a letter on whether the department was given an okay to use open tendering procurement process when procuring the PPEs under the prison department. The Supreme Court of Appeal has ordered for a review of all death sentence judgments in the country after a ruling that the death penalty is unconstitutional. The ruling by the Supreme Court follows an application by Mr. Charles Covira who applied for a review of a death sentence that was mated on him years back. This effectively means no court can mate out the death penalty in Malawi. Human rights lawyer and activist Crispin Swande has held the ruling, describing it as a milestone in Malawi laws. Alex Banda has the details. An application by a death row inmate, Charles Kovua, who applied for a review of his death sentence, might just set the country's laws in a whole new different path. This follows a successful appeal by Kovua with the Supreme Court of Appeal, granting the inmate his wish in a judgment made on Wednesday, 28th April, 2021. Headed by Chief Justice Andrew Nirenda himself and a panel of eight other justices of appeal, they have deemed the death penalty as unconstitutional in Malawi. Crispin Suande, a human rights lawyer and activist, reacts on the milestone. If you are convicted of murder, it does not mean that you will be sentenced to death. It means that every court now, the moment it has the suspects who are charged of murder, the court will never pass death sentence. It will just be passing years. Heads of human rights organizations, youth and societies, Charles Kajurweka and Michael Kaiyata, executive director for Center of Human Rights and Rehabilitation, CHRR, says it is time to strip off the death penalty from the constitution. Death penalty is a violation of the right to life. It's a violation also of the right not to be subjected to inhuman or degrading treatment. So as organizations, we are really, really very happy. And we are also hoping that government would comply with the, the Supreme Court ruling and ensure that death penalty is removed from our laws, especially the penal code. Since the dawn of multi democracy in 1994, no democratically elected president has been able to sign off on the death penalty. For Zodiac and Blanta, this is Alex Banda. Roads Fund Administration, RFA, is optimistic the road tolling system will be rolled out in July this year as construction of a 2 billion kwacha Shingeni to plaza in Cheo near its completion. RFA board chairperson Kester Kapaisi says at the moment RFI is managing to fund 
at least 50% of road maintenance projects, hence road tolling, will help to cover the deficit. We have a report by Blessings Gangombe. Roads Funds Administration RFA Board Chairperson Kesta Kapaisi told us Chingen Top Plaza construction in Cheo shall be complete in June 2021. Kapaisi believes completion of the project will help to address funding disparities on road maintenance is currently at 50%. Roads Fund Administration, its main function is to raise funds for uh, uh, maintenance and rehabilitation of roads in Malawi. So currently, um, the situation is so that uh, the current revenue that we collect can only cater for maybe about 50% of the total requirements of road maintenance and uh, rehabilitation. So we need more resources uh, for that task. That's why um, when uh, road, as Roads Fund Administration discussions uh, were undertaken, it meant that we wanted to um, find some projects that would boost the revenue collection uh, in Malawi. Meanwhile, in Kosyama Coast, Goman 5 of Mcheu describes the project as a milestone to development besides creating job opportunities to surrounding communities. I find that this is the right way to go if we are to develop, develop the country. Um, and uh, as you can also see, it, uh, it, it's, uh, it's easing the traffic as, uh, as we're also collecting uh, revenue from, our, from, our, from the motorists so that we can even develop our, our roads. So I'm quite impressed uh, and I see that there's a good future in this. The Chingen Top Plaza project, which commenced in July 2020, was expected to be complete by December 2020. However, due to COVID-19 travel restrictions, the project has delayed, hence extended to the June 2021 deadline. If you're watching the news on Zodiac, we'll take a short break and be back with more. Stick around. <music> Ashley Furniture Home Store. This is home. Blockbuster Mega Store brings you America's finest. Ashley Furniture Home Store, Malawi. Ashley Furniture Home Store is located in January Corner, opposite Makra House at the new building. Our Ashley Furniture Home Store comes in five different styles to suit every personality. Either young or old, we've got you covered. Come and experience our showroom and discover the lifestyle that suits your personality. We have Ashley Signature Collections on dining table, sofa sets, and bedroom. Come in store and see it for yourself. Our trading hours are Mondays through Fridays, 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturdays, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Sundays are closed. Visit our home store today. Ashley Furniture Home Store. This is home. What do you do when your rights as a consumer are violated? Call CFTC. Who do you tell when there are anti-competitive business practices? You tell CFTC. What do you do when you notice deceptive business conduct or excessive pricing? Oh, that's easy. Call CFTC. The Competition and Fair Trading Commission, CFTC, minimizes malpractices that disadvantage both the consumer and traders. Call Your gums hurt? Yeah. Does your toothpaste contain sage, eucalyptus, myrrh, chamomile? All that in one toothpaste? Yes, try Colgate Herbal. Colgate Herbal contains nature's best herbs and Colgate's fluoride technology to give you strong teeth and healthy gums. Ah, Colgate Herbal. Let's go. Colgate Herbal for strong teeth and healthy gums naturally. Kodi mkuziwa kuti ifi alilongo water board till ni call center yomwe ina kazikitidwa Kuti itumigire inu makasto mala A2. Ngadi mwabeza na ndifudo lili ronselo kuza na ndimazi. Musa jedwe, timbire niba 253 mwaulele. Kusia kwa mazi, madanda ulo kuza na ndimabiru. Kulibila mabiru, kupulika kwa mabaibi. Kulumigiza mazi mwajinyengo, kaya kutina kudu. Musa jedwe, timbire niba 253 mwaulele, ndipotiza kutandizani mwajangu ndimansangala. 
The general public is hereby informed that the Minister of Finance, Honorable Felix Mlosu, will be receiving contributions as part of the 2021-2022 pre-budget consultations from 9th April to 30th April 2021. The Honorable Minister therefore wishes to encourage the business community, faith-based institutions, civil society organizations, non-government organizations, development partners, parliamentary committees, professional bodies, academia, as well as members of the general public to submit their contributions on the 2021-2022 budget, which will run from 1st July 2021 to 31st March 2022. The general public is requested to note that the minister will also conduct virtual pre-meetings on the 2021-2022 pre-budget consultations from 20th to 23rd April 2021, and a virtual link will be shared with all the stakeholders in due course. Furthermore, the stakeholders are also requested to submit their views, contributions and inputs on the 2021-2022 budget by writing to the Secretary for Treasury on the following address. The envelopes should be clearly marked suggestions to the 2021-2022 budget and submit to the Secretary to the Treasury, Post Office Box 30049, Lilongwe 3 or make electronic submissions through the following email addresses revenue at finance.gov.mw and budget at finance.gov.mw For further details and clarification on the Minister's 2021-2022 pre-budget consultations, please contact Mr. Williams Banda on 0993-377-777. Ramayuniti at TNM Kuyambida 200 kwacha kapena kuposi la pamene epo muta ukala mozi mwama milionea mu TNM Tikolore promotion Kumamuka onjezi Ramayuniti ni 100 kwacha kapena kuposi la apo mozi nandia mabonas oimbida phone ni SMS kapena data pompo pompo TNM always with you Special scholarships available at UNICAF University for bachelor, master's, and doctoral degree programs. UNICAF University is accredited nationally by the NJ and internationally by the British Accreditation Council in the UK. Enroll for internationally recognized degrees at a fraction of the cost with the special scholarships available for the April-June 2021 intake. Feel safe knowing that your online studies with UNICAF University will not be disrupted by measures for the pandemic. From enrollment to graduation, everything runs smoothly online. Don't miss this golden opportunity. This offer is only valid until the end of June 2021. So apply today and get a free tablet when you register and pay the required deposit. Ring 01755333 or WhatsApp 0993. 907002 for more information. Welcome back. The headlines at this hour. Salima Sugar Company under fire for bringing expatriates from India to operate sugar manufacturing plant at a time Malawi grapples with higher rate of unemployment. PAC orders Malawi police to conduct fresh investigations into 6 million kwacha funds meant for PPE in gender ministry. Malawi Prison Services pushes blame to Dodma for not following procurement procedures in COVID-19 response. In sports, TNM Super League teams to boost their squads as transfer window expects to reopen from 15 May. Now, moving on, government says it needs about 1.2 billion kwacha to finish the construction of a conference center and a hospital both at Capitol Hill. Construction of the two projects started in 2012 and both projects have stalled for years and according to Lands Minister Kenzi Msugwa, change of government since 2012 is the cause of the problem. 
the two projects started a long time ago. Um, the clinic started in 2012 and up to today it is not completed. Uh, it is very pathetic situation that we are seeing these things still on. Because what happens in construction is that the longer the project stays, the more money you spend on that particular project. And in this particular case, the taxpayer is paying a lot much more than he would have been, you know, paying. Um, it's a pathetic situation. This particular financial year where we're in, there's no money that has been allocated to this project. Understandably so, because we're transiting. But uh, uh, coming forward, we have money allocated to this project, and we should be able to finish this project in the first quarter of the next financial year. I do have a feeling that uh, for the clinic, uh, we are on the higher side, but uh, unless we are going to include the equipment, yes, that could be even under, because uh, that would depend on what the Minister of, uh, of Health wants to really put on. But and as far as construction is concerned, um, 1.2 uh, billion for the two structures, we should be able to, to meet that target. And moving on, a donation of face masks by Malawi Gaming Board to St. Kizito Boys Primary School in Blantyre has exposed a myriad challenges rocking education system in the country. About 1,600 learners of a total of 1,700 learners sit on the floor, prompting them to ask government to come in and provide them with desks. Two of the learners, Louis Mota and Hamza Magwadi, says it is a pathetic that learners in a school within the city sit on the floor in the 21st century. Christopher Sande. Our visit to St. Kizito Boys Primary School near Limbe in Blanta on Wednesday revealed how both urban and rural learners are struggling to access education. We saw majority of learners sitting on the floor while classes were in progress. Some standard eight learners, Louis Mota and Hamza Makwati, have asked the government and development partners to provide them with basics to promote quality education. The learners say out of 1,700 pupils, only 101 standard 8 learners sit on desks, which they say is very unfair. This school is in the city, so we are supposed to have desks, but the desks are not many. So the standard 8 learners are only the ones sitting on desks. But some learners are sitting on the floor and some are sitting three on each desk. So maybe seven to one, they don't know what are desks. So they should bring us desk for children to know how to sit on the desk and what a desk is. They were speaking after Malawi Gaming Board donated the face masks at the school to protect the learners from catching COVID-19. Malawi Gaming Board spokesperson Miriam Kumboyo asked the learners to concentrate on their studies. Reporting for Zodiac from Blantyre, this is Christopher Sande. In business news, a new medical insurance company has been established in the country called Precious Medical Insurance. Chief Executive Officer for the company, Dr. Gertrude Mateo, has pledged to provide improved services to Malawians. Precious Medical Insurance, as we are talking now, is the fastest growing medical insurance on the market. Uh, this is because our premiums are affordable and we have uh, top quality benefits. So if you look at the hospital experience that we are going to have when you are on Precious Medical Insurance, it's very pleasant because when you go to the hospital, we have a very good relationship with all the hospitals that we have signed up with and uh, we don't have any shortfalls for essential and uh, emergency treatment. So when you go to hospital, you'll be treated quickly uh, without any inconveniences and you go home. Even if you are pregnant, you are going to a hospital to deliver your baby, you just deliver your baby, take the baby home without any need to pay anything or any inconveniences. So because of that, people are really flocking to precious medical insurance because it's very easy to use. Uh, it's more like an in-house scheme, but only fixed budget. And now moving on to sports, TNM Super League teams will have a chance to boost their squads as the transfer window is expected to be reopened on May 15th to 30 May. Football Association of Malawi Compliance Manager Kasper Jangare, who is also responsible for transfers, confirmed the development, saying the date has been pushed back as it was planned. The transfer window will be opened on 22 May. This will be the second and last transfer window opening of the 2020-2021 football season. Bright Kenyama has filed a report. 
After postponing the 2020-21 second transfer window opening in March, Football Association of Malawi has announced that the window will now be opened on 15th of May and will run up to the 30th of May 2021. Football Association of Malawi Compliance Manager Kasper Jangale, who is also responsible for transfers, confirmed the development, adding that all pending transfers will be finalized during the period. Jangale told us that they had planned to open the window on 22nd May, but with the TNM Super League first round concluding a week earlier, they have pushed back the date to 15 May. Things were given an opportunity uh, to reinforce or to be up the spark during uh, the half of the season. Uh, you know that our transfer window changed, uh, so we gave another opportunity for teams to reinforce. The dates have also changed from 22nd to 15th of May, uh, basically because uh, the first round will end on 15th or around that time, so we want to give them that opportunity to reinforce and uh, bring in our uh, fraud players. During the transfer window, some notable transfers are expected to be completed. Silver strikers are expected to complete the signing of former UD Songo midfielder Frank Banda. Silver Service United will also be looking to formalize Jafari Chande's move. Former Nyasa Big Bliss attacker Patrick Piri, who left the People's Team after his contract expired, will be looking for a new team as a free agent, among others. For Zodiac, this is Bright Kanyama. Well, that's it for now. Let's take another look at the headlines before we leave. Salima Sugar Company under fire for bringing expatriates from India to operate sugar manufacturing plant at a time Malawi grapples with high rate of unemployment. Park orders Malawi police to conduct fresh investigations into 6 million kwacha funds meant for PBE and gender ministry. Malawi Prison Services pushes blame to Dodma for not following procurement procedures in COVID-19 response. In sports, TNM Super League teams to boost their squads as transfer window expects to reopen from 15 to 30 May. Visit our website for more news. COVID-19 vaccination is underway in the country. Make a decision. Protect yourself. Protect your loved ones. My name is Chansey Mozabanda. Thanks for watching.